John Carpenter loves shooting here because he said the city said, do whatever you want. Yeah. Light the cars on fire, we don't care. <laughs> Everybody, we're here to show you some history, some film history specifically about St. Louis. And I got my friend here, Tampa J, Yo. who is an expert, expert. at filming locations. <laughs> and you've done Friday the 13th, Jeepers Creepers, you did Gilbert Grape, you did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've done some deep cuts, Return of the Killer Tomatoes. I like, I like to go where the movie was made and see what they look like now. And he's here in St. Louis to do a really cool uh, I mean, very detailed. I mean, we're talking about he's done all the research. My video is just going to be talking about St. Louis. His video is going to be all about Escape from New York, and you can check that out on Tampa Jay's page. But he's going to help me find all the locations to escape from New York. We escape ourselves. Well, we're going to try. <laughs> and we're here at Union Station because most of the film, uh, a big chunk of it, was filmed here at Union Station inside the old train station. This was an abandoned train station. Other film locations was the Fox Theater, right, yeah. uh, the Masonic Temple, um, you know, all over Locust Street and so on and so forth. And we're going to go explore them all. There was only a handful of scenes that wasn't filmed here. And where was that, Jay? Oh, there was Los Angeles in studio, and there was like only one scene actually filmed in New York. Tom Atkins walks out of the Statue of Liberty on Liberty Island. I think that's it. And we're also going to go to the bridge. The bridge where, they, where it ended, yes. And that's actually... It's a bridge that connects St. Louis to Illinois. They actually filmed in Illinois. Yeah. But they filmed it in the Illinois side. Yeah. And we're going to take you to all those places, but that's why we're here at Union Station so that we can show you all of these amazing places right here in St. Louis. So make sure you go to Tampa Jay's page to see the complete video. Thank you. But watch this video if you want the short version. And off we go. Watch your head. Cool place, first time here. And a, a couple things I will tell you is that this train station was abandoned because you know trains weren't that popular for transportation of people anymore. Actually, what became more popular was Greyhound buses, buses. at the time. Yeah. Okay, you know, and Greyhound. And then eventually airplanes. So this was an abandoned train station, and then later it was the biggest re restoration project in the history of the United States. And they added those hotels, these restaurants. And then later it was renovated again and this wheel and aquarium and many other things. But when John Carpenter was here filming his movie, there was nothing here but abandoned trains. And I will tell you there's a couple differences when they shot a lot of the scenes where they were walking in and out of trains. So everything in here would have been train tracks. Like when you watch a Harry Potter movie and it's yeah. like train after train after train. That would have been right here. So St. Louis is one of the biggest train stations in the United States. Uh, because it was in the central part of the country. So all of those are gone, but there would have been train tracks like all in here. So it's really hard to determine uh, because when he filmed here, there was trains still yeah. sitting here. Okay. Now they've been moved over here. But some of the shots were definitely over here and you can line up because if you watch the movie very closely, you can see all of these beams. You can see these girders up here. All of this is original to the original train station. And what scenes were shot under here, Jay? Oh, uh, the scene where uh, Kurt Russell, uh, Snake Plissken, comes and rescues the president, Donald Pleasance, because he was being like held on like a train car. And also Adrian Barbeau and uh, Mr. Anderson, I can't think of his first name, the guy from Red Dawn, uh, he was there as well. And they were all kind of gathered around the train tracks, the train that you see in the movie out here before they cut to the shots that you see later in the movie, the wrestling scene and the restaurant scene inside the train station. So that all led up out here before you get to that. So yeah, right here. And then no sooner than uh, John Carpenter finishes wrapping up, they start restoring this old train station into being an entertainment venue. And then you look around, you know, they got uh, restaurants, uh, they have an aquarium, they have ropes courses, they have a mini golf. And on these old trains, these original trains, back from the 60s and the 50s, they do events on these trains, uh, like uh, Polar Express, for example, is one of them. But this is it. And I definitely think, Jay, if I'm not wrong, you see the canopy over there? There was some walking around underneath that yeah. canopy over there, which in the old days would have actually had a canopy on it for passengers to walk up and down. And then you see where this arrow is right here. There would have been a line of trains here as well for people on this side to board trains 
and people on that side to board trains. But all of those train tracks are gone as part of the renovation. And the only train tracks left. Those are the only train tracks left. And, but those are the original trains that were sitting here when John Carpenter filmed this movie. Those are the trains. Oh, wow. They were just simply moved from the center, all piled on to each other right over here. Right here at this door, the character Romero was inside of here with the president and some bad guys. And Dean Statton and Adrian Barbeau come through this restaurant right here at Union Station and they have a conversation right you know, through this door and they were let in and then sitting right there was the President of the United States. And oddly enough, there was also a pinball machine right here. Yeah. <laughs> and this room is exactly like it was in the movie. Nothing has changed other than the fact that the wallpaper is gone. It had red and, and red and white, red and white striped paper. wallpaper. But other than that, this room is identical. And if you watch the movie, you can see a lot of it took place like right in here. And then Adrian Barbeau, who was over here, whipped out a gun. She shot all the bad guys. And the president was sitting over there with a wig on and makeup. There is, there's Jay. He's, he's gonna recreate it. And he had a wig on with makeup. And there's like an American flag draped over the chair here. And he was tied up as well, right? Oh yeah. And then they cut him loose and they took uh, the wig off of him, right? And then they exited through that door and through that restaurant. And that restaurant is right here, and it's right next to where the wrestling uh, scene took place. Yep. It's literally what, you know, 30 feet, 40 feet from the room where the wrestling was. Right out there, yeah. yeah, and so then the next scene would be, they open the door and they cut through the restaurant. And it all happened right here, and it's identical. Do you have a screenshot? To... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here, sh let's take a look at this. I don't know if I and Jay's going to get it on his uh, phone. And, uh, yeah, this is amazing. Now, of course, this desk and this carpet and stuff wasn't here. Yeah, exactly. But this is the original uh, flooring, the whole shebang. Um, but the room's been restored, obviously. And uh, this is a really critical scene in the movie. And there it is, right there, see? That's a good one. There's Romero getting killed in the corner. And Donald Pleasance is sitting. Yeah, right there with the wig. Also, there's some weird mannequins kind of behind here. Yes, and he's got a statue on his head. And that would have been, and you can see that pillar, it's right here. But the whole scene would have taken place between where Jay is right and right yeah. here. Right this area. And, and, then, and then Adrian Barbeau would be over here. And then she would have shot all of the bad guys, and then they would have freed the president. Yeah. Is that about right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. There's a better shot of it. So this is right here. After they left the room we were just in, they go right past these pillars right here. And this room, I mean, this whole hotel, everything here was abandoned. So it looked pretty creepy, and it's hard to distinguish. But those pillars, you can see as Adrian Barbeau leaves with the president out these doors. I think they're doing the Beatles now. They were doing Freddie Mercury earlier. Yeah, they're doing a video projection in the wrestling room. And whenever they were going to have Snake Plissken wrestle, and his name was... I told you what his name was. It was... Uh, Ox. Ox. Yeah. Uh, and he... They walked Snake clicks and clicks. <laughs> we they walked Snake Kurt Russell down this hallway and into this room where he wrestled a six foot six, three hundred and sixty pound real wrestler to the death. Probably the most enjoyable scene in the whole entire movie was filmed right here in this room, and you know where it was filmed right there with that stained glass window and that arch, and right up there would have been. All the bad guys would be lined up right up there, okay? And the wrestling rink would be right there. And that's where Snake Plissken wrestled uh, to the death and he killed the guy. And then the crowds would have been all in this room. And this is where it was filmed. The wrestling scene from Escape from New York. And everybody was up there. Isaiah Hayes, 
and all of his henchmen. And if you look really closely, do you see the ceiling up there? It's exactly the same as in the movie. And then you can see this in the background. And a lot of times when they had camera angles like pointing up here, you can see just a glimpse of this stained glass window. Now is a hotel lobby, and that's where we've been standing. Yep, and then you can see it right there. The stained glass window is right there. Yeah. And then Isaiah Hayes would have been right up there above it. And, and the rink was right here. Ox Banker, who was a real wrestler. Yeah. And he at one time was the NWA tag team champion. Oh, cool. And he well, wrestled, you know yeah, uh, and he wrestled all, you know, pretty much all NWA over the place. NWA started in Tampa, Florida. Dusty Rhodes, Dick the Bruiser. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, think about it. Now they have projection uh, screens up in the area where Isaiah Hayes would have been standing right there. Okay, so the stain, so from this screenshot here, the stain black there, which is above the staircase to get up here, that's your biggest identifier. Snake Plissken actually walked out of the door here, came up into the wrestling arena, and then up there is where the Duke was. The lights are kind of dim right now, but once they come on, you can see it a little better. The wrestling ring is right here. Yeah, and Jay, the other thing is we also identified that that door right there is what leads to where the president was yeah, being so that's held. that's where we just were, right over there. That's where the president was. So this is amazing. How beautiful it is in here. If you look at this awesome ceiling, we're up here on the fourth floor. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. And when you watch the movie, you can see this balcony and the one below. And I'm standing right in the middle of this floor. The Duke would have been one below us, and the wrestling rink is still there, but it's carpet. <laughs> and all the stands, all the crowd, and then all of the Duke's army would have been one level below oh, us so right here. so there's people up here too. Yeah, yeah, and there was people up here. And you can see this ceiling, so and it's exactly the same as it was cool. before. Of tons of extras, there was people hanging out right here in the open. And the wrestling rink was right there. Like, just think about this. This is where they shot Escape from New York. And you can see this in the movie, but look at this. This is how this thing was built. Because we've got some uh, roof leakage there. And you can kind of see what it looks like from up here. And there it is. The wrestling rink was right there. You can see that, uh, like that arch thing right there with the... Um, Stained glass window. The Duke would have been right there. And that's a wrestling rink. And here it is. You can really see the H right there. Yes, I know. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, look right there. It's like. Uh, yeah, I know. Maybe had a leak or something. It's crazy. How, that's how it was built. That <laughs> <laughs> That's staff only because that's where they have their. You know, fifty thousand dollar uh, video mapping projectors. That's where all the projectors. For yes, the show are. that's why you can't go in there. Oh, okay. So if we come over here, and this is pretty badass too, and look at that ceiling. Okay, that's yeah, exactly. That's ceiling. You can't come over here. But now you can see a, a lot better. Oh, I see. Yeah, all the projectors. Are right and see, there. that's why you can't get in there because those are like fifty thousand dollar projectors, and right there in that center one, that's where the Duke was. You could even count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it would be the center one, which is right there. And then the Duke would be looking down right there onto the wrestling rink. It's all right here. And most of the filming was done from the bar side, this direction, because of the Duke and his henchmen up there. And because in all of the scenes, you see that, you know, that big arch with that really beautiful stained glass window. So most of the cameras would have been set up over here. And this, the back, side the back side of Union Station, which leads out to the back where all the attractions are. Uh, Donald Pleasance was in here, chained to the wall. They were firing shots at him. And there was a lot of stuff like right in here. You can tell that it's this room because it's big, it's wide. And then if you look at the end of the hallway, you see the big archway. And when you watch the movie, it's clear as day that it was filmed right here. Okay, we are here at the old chain of Rocks Bridge. And we're on the Illinois side, and in case you're not aware, this goes all the way to St. Louis, and is now a very popular tourist attraction. Because it's over two miles long, and you can walk from one side of the Missouri, or the Mississippi River to the other, 
But this is the famous location doubling up as the 69th bridge in New York City. And this bridge, uh, then and now, as they say. this bridge closed in 1970. It was built in 19, like, well, officially opened in like 1915-ish. And they started building it in 1865. It took like, you know, 30 years to build this uh, bridge right here. And Jay, yeah. give us like some of the, cause you're the expert. Okay, just give us the overall, <laughs> like what happened here. So right here, this is the final like moment at the end. Donald Pleasance, who played the president, uh, was at the end of the, they were going with him to the end of the bridge. Adrian Barbeau, uh, the guy from Red Dawn, can't think of his name. Uh, also, Ernest Borgnine, they all died on that bridge right there at the end. And then he's running, and then right here they built a giant set, a giant wall, which is like the wall of New Jersey around New York in the film. And this is where Isaac Hayes was killed by Donald Pleasance, the president, shooting from the wall, and then Kurt Russell climbs up the wall. That all happened right out here on the Illinois side of this bridge. And that building right there was actually seen you in the movie. You can see that in the movie as uh, the Duke in his car is entering the bridge. There's a screenshot where you can see that and that telephone pole. Nice wide angle of them entering into that bridge. And then what are just a couple of the little cues that you picked up on here? Uh, and uh, basically, right yeah, it's covered over now but manholes that you can see before the taxi, Ernest Borgnine's taxi cabbie in the movie. You and can, guess what, can... the skid marks are still here. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I missed those. <laughs> Who knows, it could be from the movie. That's a good observation. Uh, but one of the things we did notice, if you watch the movie, you'll see that this whole thing is littered with uh, wrecked cars, barrels with fire, and so on and so forth. This is where they yeah, had they machine were, guns, they, the president killed the Duke, Yep. right? Yep. And the Duke uh, was the villain. He was pretty much like the gangster that ran the prison of New York because that was turned into a, a, you know, somewhat of a prison. There was only one way and one way out, and that was by air, and they had no way of getting off the island. If you hadn't watched the movie, Kurt Russell, that was like his first big movie to break away from like the Disney. stereotype of being in Disney movies. Uh, the computer who wore tennis shoes. And he did make a sequel to it. Exce oh, Escape from L.A. Escape yeah. from L.A. I like that one too. That's one of my, my guilty pleasures. And we noticed like this right here was pretty much like the movie didn't film much beyond this area just kind of right here. This, this part of the bridge. Yep, and then they filmed both going both directions because once you set up the cars and the barrels, then you can go the other direction, you know, and film yeah. it again without having to do much work. But this is a major filming location and the final filming location of Escape from New York. This yeah. is where Kurt yeah. Russell yeah. escapes with the president and the cabbie dies. Ernest Borgnine dies. Adrian. Adrian Barbeau the, dies. The brain. They all die like right here on this bridge. And just so you know, like I'm a big fan of Adrian Barbeau. I like Swamp Thing, Swamp Creep good. Show, yeah. The Fog, and of course Escape from New York. Good movies. All right, so we're gonna go and, and visit a couple other locations around St. Louis this time, not in the Illinois side, but in St. Louis. But this one is really cool, and you could come out here and walk the bridge and walk across the Mississippi River. Yeah, you go all the way across it. That's like two miles. And there's some notorious history here. Uh, one person died building the bridge, and two people were actually sadly murdered on this bridge. And uh, But it is amazing to see and walk across. And if you look at this building right here, Snake Plissken, he walks across right here. And you can even see these stones, they're identical in the movie. And then you'll see the Fox Theater, which is doubling up for a theater in Manhattan, but it was right here in St. Louis. And here's the history. The Fox Theater was actually a movie theater all the way through the 1960s. And, you know, movie theaters, people started becoming suburbanites, and, you know, they didn't travel to the city to see films anymore. And since it was primarily a movie theater um, and no one was coming here to see movies, they were in the suburbs seeing films, um, it closed. And so the Fox Theater closed down and it later was renovated. And now its primary uh, function is live events. Like as you can see, it says Nutcracker Ballet. And they would do Wicked here and things of that nature. And it is probably one of the most beautiful um, 
facilities like it in the world. And at one point, it was the second largest in the United States. See that building over there? That was a Woolworth. That was a department store. And I know this because I actually tried to buy that building and it turned it into the darkness. <laughs> so that was actually gonna be the darkness at one point. But most of this stuff here was all vacant and abandoned, including that building. And then later in 1981, they renovated the Fox Theater and then it became a live performing arts venue. But if you watch the movie, you'll see Snake Plissken walk across here. He'll walk across the street and if you look at the movie really closely, there's some graffiti on the wall that says Fox Theater, even though it was supposed to be a New York building. And look at that. John Carpenter, who made the movie Halloween, which by the way, I don't think is his best movie. I think The Thing is. And it was right here. This is it, where Snake Plissken goes into the theater. Now what's interesting is the theater scenes were filmed in Los Angeles. But look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's identical. This is the original box office from 1929 when this place opened. Oddly enough, this place was built by, uh, I can't remember his first name, but it was the same person who started 20th Century Fox. So he had built about five of these. Uh, one was in Detroit, and they were movie theaters to show films. And he built this. And right there is where Kurt Russell, and he comes right here to this door. I am walking the streets of St. Louis, and by the way, as you know, I'm in the scary business with the darkness, creepy world, and lamp. We're documenting the scary history of St. Louis. And you know what's right in front of us as I'm walking here with my buddy, Yo. Tampa J, who has one of the coolest creepy YouTube pages. This is a creature feature for sure. This is a creature feature for sure. And I was telling Jay what this church is and the building next to it. This is a real life location for the exorcist. For those who don't know, the exorcist was a book and it was based on a real life event that happened, but it happened to a boy and it happened in St. Louis. Were you aware of that, Jay? I just got like goosebumps on my goosebumps. No, I didn't know. And they decided that he was possessed by a demon, Jay. Ugh. And they, per they decided they would perform exorcisms and they got somebody who had done them before. Uh, and some of the exorcisms were performed right here. There was three locations, Jay, where they performed exorcisms. One- this church right here. That's right. Well, that's the Catholic, uh, of the building right there. So this is the church and that's where they live. Okay. This is part of St. Louis University. And that's what all of that is over there is St. Louis University. You can see the little signs everywhere. St. Louis University is a Catholic university. Okay. And so they are the ones that got involved in the exorcism and the exorcism were formed in, performed in three locations. One was in Alexian Brothers Hospital, which they claimed in that ward where the exorcisms performed, they could never uh, heat it. And it was always cold and they tore it down. The foundation for it, the walls around it is still there. Okay, but it's gone. And then the house, the real house, was not in, you know, uh, Georgetown, uh, you know, DC area. It was here in St. Louis and it still exists to this day. It's right here in St. Louis. And believe it or not, the person who did the exorcisms, like performed by Max Sidow, he's buried here in St. Louis. But they did the exorcisms right there. That was one of the three locations. It was in the house, in the church, and at Alexian Brothers Hospital. And there it is, St. Louis. The most famous horror movie, and by the way, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, Jay, but when you, when you adjust box office, it's one of the top 10 highest grossing films of all time. It literally sent people into church because people were terrified of being possessed by the devil. And they got a, and they got a sequel coming out. Have you seen the trailer for the sequel? And there it is. St. Louis's scary, haunted history. The real life exorcist. Exorcisms were performed right there. We're here at the St. Louis Masonic Temple. And as you can see, this thing is gigantic. It's uh, almost 200 feet tall. Um, it's 380,000 square feet. 
And this was the home for the Freemasons here in St. Louis. And the head of the Freemasons in St. Louis was Harry S. Truman, who was the president of the United States that dropped the atomic bomb on Japan. And he was also the president of the United States when the Korean War broke out. Uh, very, in, very important uh, US president. And he had an office here in this building, as did Charles Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh was, became a Freemason here in this building right here in St. Louis. Uh, and you know worked with Harry S. Truman, believe it or not, right here in this building. But in terms of escape from New York, Ernest Borgnine came across Academy Award winning Ernest Borgnine actor, walked right up these steps, and get this, Ernest Borgnine was a Freemason, and he attended Freemason meetings here in St. Louis while he was filming Escape from New York, and he walked right up these steps right here, and as a Freemason, there's the Freemason symbol, as he walked up these steps, he touched this as probably, you know, honoring the Freemasons. Like, he probably wasn't instructed to, but he did it anyway. And he walked right in that building right there. Inside these doors. Look at this building. It is now under construction and being turned into apartments. What's that, Jay? And he was opening, the camera would have been over there. Like, if you stand right there and shoot back this way, you can see that. Ernest Borgnine comes here to this door. Kurt Russell's pushed up like this. He looks down at his watch and you see 17, 40, and 45 seconds right here. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. You really know the movie. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that these are the exact same doors from oh, on almost 100 years ago, 1929? 1929. So this building is almost 100 years old. I think you said 1926, the theater was 29. Okay, so it is 100 years old, basically. Basically, a couple years. Amazing, isn't it? We're at Shapley's Tap Room, and you can see right inside, they've got taps. But when Kurt Russell, he basically lands on the Twin Towers, if you don't recall, I believe it was the Twin Towers, but it was on top of a building. And when he did that, and he made his way down to and he made his way down to uh, the ground floor he was trying to work his way to the planes and he walked right here and I tried to pull up on my phone but it just keeps playing commercials yeah he walks right here <laughs> he walks right here is that right yeah Jay? so the but prior to that, he was coming out of the World Trade Center. Right, and he landed on the top see, of the Trade Center. This is actually the first time you see St. Louis, you know, well, St. Louis, New York, in the film, right here. Right and he walked right past this building, and then that vacant lot over there. That's where Air Force One crashed. Right, and then in the movie, if you uh, look at it close enough, you can see those buildings behind it. They're still there. Yep. So if we look at Jay's phone right here, you see that building right there? It's still right there. The crash, Oops. Site, was right the crash site was right there in the corner, and that building can be seen in the background. Should we go over and check out oh, the yeah. plane? Oh yeah, the You'll plane see boss. if it's still there? Plane. It might be still be there. <laughs> they say pieces of Leonard Skinner's plane is still uh, in the ground there. So it's possible the president's plane yeah. is still there. I'm just showing, he's like walking. You see those windows? Yeah. He's right there. Right here. Yeah, he kind of stops. Hold on, I'm gonna show those. Yeah, act it out for us, Jay. Oh, I'm just gonna, and then right here is where he actually enters the street and heads towards the yeah, crash the Air Force One. See this right here? Yep. That right there, that column? So yep, there's there that it column is. right there. Yeah, he enters the street right here. You see these windows as he's walking that way, that building, and then right over there, I'll show you in just a second, is where Air Force One crashed. Donald Pleasance as the president. Which we didn't see him for a while yet. So you can see right here where the Shafley Tap Room sign is. And watch the movie back, watch Escape from New York. You'll see him, he'll be standing right here next to this fire hydrant. You can actually see the fire hydrant in the shot and he's standing right here. And he walks over there, 
where Tampa J is, and in that lot is where they set up the crashed airplane, scattered cars, debris, burning barrels, everything is exactly the same, including these buildings in the background. John Carpenter did interviews, and you can watch them on YouTube, where he talks about the reason why he shot the movie in St. Louis. Uh, uh, one of the main reasons was the train station. Union Station was abandoned at the time, um, as was the Fox Theater and many other things. Um, but he said that St. Louis let him do whatever he wanted. Uh, something they would have never done in Los Angeles. So it's like put wrecked cars all over the place, catch them on fire, and he did it. And he literally brought a wrecked airplane and he put it right there. And if you watch the movie, you can see that building right there in the background. And of course, we still have Mr. Tampa J. Yeah. And he's gonna explain what happened right here on this street. So this was Broadway in the movie. She, I think Adrian Barbeau's like, or someone in the car, they're in the station wagon, they're headed to the train station, they're like, oh, go this way, and they're like, no, that's Broadway. They go down Broadway. This is Broadway, this is Locust Avenue. This is where they stacked all those cars. The people of New York, the prisoners, had a roadblock, and it was basically like a gauntlet, and it all was shot right here in between 21st and 22nd right there and all these right. buildings are exactly the same yeah you can see them in the backdrop the all these buildings are exactly the same as they were back then and, yeah. and what is interesting too is from my understanding they drove the car this direction and because they had the whole street set up with correct cars and everything yeah, they, to get another perspective they drove it back the other way yeah they, they constantly do that in movies they just drive different directions get different angles and you know one of the things that's interesting jay is that that's why uh, John Carpenter loves shooting here because he said the city said, do whatever you want. Yeah. Light the cars on fire. We don't care. One heck of a movie set. <laughs> yeah. They would have never gotten away I, with that in California. When I watched it, I thought it was, it was so good that I thought it was a set. The first time you see it, it's like, oh, they had to make all that. No, no place exists like that. Yeah. But there it is. This side of the street was used in Escape from New York. Which, by the way, is right across the street from where the president's plane was. So, when you when you're imagining them trying to shoot this movie on a budget, they want to keep everything close together. They literally would shoot these scenes right here. They would walk across the street and shoot those scenes. Uh, this is the street where Kurt Russell uh, was walking from the w World Trade Center, and he was coming down here to find the uh, the plane of the president, which was right there. I mean, think about it. Like, so much stuff is right next to each other. And then, if you can see this, and I'm gonna show it to you, and I'm gonna zoom in. Do you see that all the way back there? That is the tower of the Union Station Hotel, and that's where they shot a giant chunk of Escape from New York. And then right here is the brand new soccer stadium. All part of St. Louis history, right here. So there's the wall of vehicles. This was the wall they placed here in the street. Uh, vehicles and the car that they're in, the station wagon, blast right through it. And I was able to locate it because of the windows here. You see behind the wall in the shot, they're the same windows. So that's amazing that they like stacked all the cars right here to film that scene. Like they literally could do whatever they wanted making this this uh, movie obviously that's pretty sick make sure you go to Tampa Jay's page and actually see his video because I guarantee you it's gonna be way more detailed than mine as you know I live here in st. Louis and there's been many movies shot in st. Louis and another place that I would like to do filming locations is another movie that was filmed here called up in the air I really like that movie there was another movie here with Kevin Costner called American Flyer um, there's been several movies filmed here in st. Louis but being someone who likes horror and things of that nature, Escape from New York was a no-brainer. So thanks for watching the channel. And if you're ever in St. Louis, go check out the locations. I want to thank Tampa J. And right here, from the original trains that were in Escape from New York, happy Halloween, happy hauntings, because guess what? Halloween is here. For scary videos and more, subscribe to our YouTube page, HuntWorld.com.